Hey everyone, today we're going to be starting a new series here on my YouTube channel and it is going to be sewing techniques from A to Z. Each week we're going to be tackling a different sewing technique that coordinates with the letters of the alphabet. So today we're going to be working on appliques. I'm going to show you guys some of the best practices to make sure that your applique turns out perfectly every time and we're going to be going over the different kinds of stitches that you can use to create one. If you're anything like me, you have a ton of scraps that are just laying around and really pretty fabrics that you just can't bear to throw away because you're going to use them someday. But they're usually too small to actually use on a big project. So appliques are a great way for me to use up my scraps and spruce up some boring items in the process. The first thing we're going to do is take a square of our double-sided adhesive stabilizer and we're going to cut this square slightly larger than what we want our finished applique to finish at and we're going to peel off one side of the paper back. I like to first adhere the side that's the stickiest to my applique fabric that way the slightly less stickier side will be to my main fabric and I can move it around a lot easier to get the positioning right. Once you have that side peeled off, go ahead and stick it to the wrong side of your applique fabric. Now we can take our applique stencil and trace that onto the remaining paper side of our stabilizer. Once you're finished tracing, you can cut out your applique and remove the paper backing. Now we can stick it to our main fabric. Now if you don't get the placement right the first time, that's okay, it's not permanent yet. You should be able to just peel your applique up and replace it. Once you're happy with the placement of your applique, you can go ahead and fuse all the pieces together with a hot iron. You will want to check your stabilizer instructions to be sure that you have it on the right heat setting and that you're pressing it for the right amount of time. Now appliques usually require a denser number of stitches which means that we need to use a tearaway stabilizer behind our main fabric while we're sewing the applique to keep the applique from puckering whenever we sew it. Now when it comes to deciding on the kind of stitch that you want to use for your applique, it's going to depend on the project that you're doing and the type of fabric that you're using. Now on a fleece project, you might not care about the raw edges because they don't fray and so you can use just a simple straight stitch and that's fine and a lot of people use that on fleeces and felt projects. Now the first applique stitch that I'm going to show you how to do is going to be the blanket stitch and this is a great stitch if you don't want to use a heavy or dense stitch and it's also great if you want a more homemade feel to your project. Here you can see me playing with the stitch length and stitch width and if you want it to look more like mine I'm using a 3mm stitch length and a 3mm stitch width. Now I'm also using a specialty blanket stitch that comes on my machine and it might not come on yours and that's fine. Um, I'm mostly using this one because it shows up a little bit darker on camera but a regular blanket stitch will work just as well. Now before you start sewing your applique, you need to be sure that your fabric is lined up with where your needle is going to be stitching. On this particular stitch on my machine, the um, side that I want to line my fabric up with is this right notch on my presser foot because that's where it's doing that straight stitch at. Now on your machine, and depending on what stitch you're using, it might be completely different. So you need to check that before you start sewing so you don't mess up your project. When you start going around sharp corners and turns, be sure that your needle is down before you lift up your presser foot to pivot to keep on track. If you don't, your fabric might get warped underneath the machine and the stitch isn't going to come out as nice. So just take your time around these bends and turns. It might take a little bit depending on the shape that you choose, but it's definitely worth it. Now here on the applique shape that I've chosen, you can see that I have this really dramatic point right in the center. So to get my blanket stitch to look just right on there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew pretty much as far as I can and then once I get my needle right in the middle of that point, I'm going to put the needle down, lift my presser foot up and turn it at a perfect 90 degree angle. And what that's going to do is put a perfect blanket stitch right in the center of my heart and it will look perfectly symmetrical at that point. Then you can put your needle down again 
and pivot your heart and start doing the other side. The next applique stitch is the satin stitch. And this stitch you've probably seen quite often in store-bought clothes because it is used very often in clothes that have appliques and clothes that have embroidery on them. And that's why I like this stitch so much because it does have a slightly more professional feel to it than the blanket stitch does. Now my machine has a satin stitch built into the machine and I'm using the 4mm satin stitch. However, if you have a more basic machine that only has a zigzag stitch, that's okay too. All you have to do is set your stitch width to 4 millimeters wide and your stitch length to 0.8 millimeters long to get the exact same stitch that I'm doing. However, you're going to want to test this out and see if this stitch length and stitch width is good for the project that you're doing. You might want a little bit smaller, you might want a little bit larger, so be sure that you test it out first. Now when you're using a satin stitch to do an applique, you have to pay attention once again to where you're actually stitching. So on my applique, I need to make sure that I'm lining the raw edge up with the center of my presser foot because with a satin stitch, it's going to zigzag back and forth over that raw edge and you want to be sure that it's covered. Another tip I have for you guys when you first start doing these appliques is if you have a corner or a point to your applique shape, it has always come out so much cleaner and nicer for me if I start and stop in that corner. Every time I've started, like maybe in the middle of a straight line for instance, um, it has always ended up not quite matching perfectly and drives me crazy. So if I start and stop in the corner, it's always come out a million times better. So those were the two most common applique stitches, however, they're not the only two stitches that are out there. You can literally use any stitch that is on your machine that is wide enough to cover the raw edge. Now on my machine I have this kind of scribble looking applique stitch and you can use any decorative stitch that's on your machine. If you have one with hearts, if you have one just like this, then it will work for the applique. So just experiment and see what you can come up with because there's a lot of stitches on our machines that we sometimes never use and this is a great way to get some use out of them and have a really cool looking applique in the end. The last steps to finishing your applique is if you use tearaway stabilizer, you're going to want to go ahead and tear that away as the name suggests. And don't worry about any bits that are left behind, you don't have to pick them out. They will disintegrate in the wash, you just want to get the main chunks of it out. And then once you're done with that, give your finished project a good press and you are ready to go.